Hello, my name is Alessandro. I'm a tabletop RPG designer, and today I'd like to talk to you about Affinity Publisher. So, a bunch of my friends have been asking me, you know, how to get into this program because they see the layouts I do and they like them, and they want to know what my process is. So, I just wanted to do like a real quick and dirty video about what I do, how I have things set up, and um, just some quick tips in terms of getting started. So, if you already know how to use Affinity Publisher, this may not be the most helpful video, but if you really like tabletop RPGs and you're like, hey, I want to make my own character sheets, this might be a good jumping off point for you. So obviously once you install the program you want to start by going to File and then New. Um, you're gonna see all kinds of dizzying options here. Don't worry, you're just worried about printing at the letter scale, uh, you know, character sheets and that sort of stuff for print at home. That scale is um, letter, if you were curious, you know, your, your average uh, printer sheet paper, it is this. Uh, make sure you're printing at 300 dpi. dpi is sort of the uh, resolution that your print is going to be printing out. So the higher the DPI, the better. I think this can go all the way up to 400, but 300 will be fine. It'll keep your file size down. Next up, we want to look at orientation. So I love doing layouts in horizontal. I think it saves table space. I think it's just a lot smarter in general. However, some people prefer the more traditional portrait. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, choose whatever's going to work best for you. We're going to just stick with horizontal for the sake of this video. Next, we're going to go down to margins. So if you don't know what margins are, essentially margins help you make sure that whatever you're making um, is within the uh, printable area. So uh, margins will create like this border um, on the kind of inside of your sheet to make sure that you aren't going outside of that and whatever you're working on outside of the margins will probably not get printed. Um, so you want to stay within those margins. However, as important as margins are, uh, one inch is incredibly large and unnecessary for margins. So we're going to lower this down to 0.3 inches so that we're not wasting no space and uh, so that you get plenty of good design in there. So you might be asking yourself, why 0.3 inches? So I did a bit of research on this. The average inkjet printer caps out at about 0.25 inches for its margins. Um, there are some laser printers that can go much, much, much closer to the outside of the page than that. Um, but we generally want to go with 0.3 inches. This keeps stuff safe. Um, and it, it lets us make sure that, you know, no matter what someone's printing on, this will probably work. All right. And we're just going to hit create and then jump right into it. So, um, whoops, I got that on. Uh, so normally you'll probably see something like this. Uh, I don't even know if uh, grid is on by default. So you'll see something like this. This blue line here is your margins. So again, we never want to put anything outside the margins unless we like really, really have to, or we want to make sure that something's extending out of view, essentially. Um, so the first thing you want to do is uh, definitely um, go to view and then make sure the grid is on. The grid is really helpful. It'll make sure that everything you do looks nice. And on top of that, you want to go into this magnet and just really make sure that snap to grid is on because this will make sure that the next part really kicks in and helps you out. Uh, this magnet obviously makes sure that item snap to grid. So, you know, if we put a box here, it'll it'll move around in this grid. Now, this grid is uh, lovely and helpful, but uh, this default one is absolutely useless and we're going to get rid of it immediately. So the way that we do that is we go down to view and then grid and access manager. Once we're in here, we switch over to basic. And what I recommend is 0 0.05 inches for your grid. So what this is going to do is essentially we're moving uh, into pseudo pixel art territory where, um, see if I hit enter, uh, you'll see that we have this really fine grid that we're working in now. And this will help us sort of differentiate and really fine tune everything while still, you know, providing a grid that we can snap things to. So I find that 0.5 inches is the most helpful because you'll see, um, if we squeeze two objects together at 0.5 inches, you, know, you can still see the difference there, but it, they're really closely squeezed together. And then, you know, we go out to, you know, 0.2 inches here, and then we have a, you know, that might be two different categories of a thing. But it's just a very good baseline, I've found, um, for separating things out while it still gives enough granularity and fine detail that we can say, like, oh, this one is just ever so slightly larger than this one, etc. And as you can see, these boxes are slotting in very nicely. Um, so another quick thing before we get into any of these tools over here on the left, I do want to draw your attention to the fact that uh, this looks absolutely uh, garbage. We can't really tell what our layout looks like with this margin line and all these uh, little griblies. So what we do is we go up into preview mode and hit this and then voila, we can see what our layout is actually looking like. Um, then we go back into grid mode and can go back to fine tuning. So uh, next up, 
I want to talk about uh, these tools. But before then, we need to talk about layers. So I can't remember if layers actually lives over here normally, but I find it really helpful to have this right here. You always want your layers tab up. Uh, for those who don't know what layers are, uh, just quick primer on that. This kind of uh, determines what's going to be, you know, on the forefront of a uh, of an image. So, for instance, something that's on a higher layer will overlap, whereas if we want to have this on the top, we just make it go to a higher layer. And this also helps us keep everything organized, see all the different parts that we're working with. And uh, when you get into layouts that have a lot of different text boxes and various shapes and stuff, this is really nice to have organized. Um, and if you're like me, sometimes this will look like a complete mess, um, but that's fine because you know what's happening. And as long as you know what's happening, the chaos is controlled and it'll all export the same anyways. So let's talk about these amazing tools over here. So this is the one that you're going to be on most of the time. This is just the move tool. This lets you grab things and move them around. So, you know, if I, I put a box down, I can grab this and move it around. Also, very useful is this box tool right here. So um, if you hold down click, you can get all kinds of other different shapes. But generally speaking, you're usually just going to be making boxes. So, you know, if we wanted this to be a character sheet box, you know, we can say like, oh, this is going to be like the name box and it's going to be uh, right here. So you have your fill and your stroke. Stroke is like the outline. Um, you can change how big the stroke is going to be. So we could have, you know, a one point outline. I find one point is pretty good because it shows up well and nice and clear and boldly. Um, and then fill, usually you just want an invisible fill unless you're, you know, going for something that's a little bit uh, grade scaled. So, you know, for my swatches, I have it set to the grays just so, you know, I can do like, oh, it's, it's like 15% uh, gray or whatever. Um, but we're just going to leave that out there. Uh, so next up, you're going to want to do text. And because we all know the alphabet starts today, you're going to want to touch this one. Don't touch this one. Artistic text, I don't I don't know how to use this. I've never learned how to use this. this. There's almost certainly a use for what this is, but I find this tool to be uh, slightly more unintuitive. So for right now, we're not going to cover it. And if, if you want to learn more about it, Affinity has some really good tutorials on their website, and you can look at those. But yeah, don't. Don't touch this one. We're going to talk about this one. Frame text tool is amazing. So we know exactly um, how big we want this box to be in terms of, you know, this is going to be, you know, rules explanation. And we can literally set the frame tool to fit this box. Um, if we want to, we can create an indent by being like, OK, we're going to go. This is the other reason why I do 0.5, because it's awesome for stuff like indentation. We're going to be like, all right, we're going to go all the way in here. There's technically an easier way to do this. So what we can also do with the text toolbox that is really awesome is we can actually have the box itself, um, if we go into text frame, have an outside stroke. And we can set that to 1. And there you go. Um, and then you can use these insets, essentially, to do what I just did manually. Um, the reason I don't do this is kind of just personal preference. Um, I don't necessarily like using this because I like being, having my text separate from my boxes. Because usually I use boxes at the start just to like figure out where everything's getting laid out and then I add the text later. Um, but if you're the sort of person who you know exactly what text you're going to do, this method that I just showed you can be equally useful. Um, so those two tools are pretty much your bread and butter. You're going to be using them all the time. Um, and a lot of the rest of the stuff, if you're familiar with stuff like Word or any other text processing, it's just like that. So once you set up your text toolbox, you know, you can go up here and change to all different kinds of, you know, uh, different fonts and stuff. We'll set this to Comic Sans just to hurt your eyes a little bit. Um, you can obviously increase the pointage. Um, so I'm going to uh, demonstrate something else. Um, this is what I love about Affinity. So as you see, we just went outside of our text box. This is the reason you don't use artistic tool, because um, the artistic text does not do this. Um, but in this, it does, using the text box. So when you use more space than you've allotted yourself, you get this little eye, and this eye is very mad at you. And you can click it to see what text just got you know, off the wrapper. But we essentially use this to say, oh, OK, so whatever we just wrote is not going to fit in the space that we've allotted ourselves. So what we do. Control A to select everything. If you want, you can just layer the pointage or uh, lower the pointage so that it's you know down to 22 point font or you know 21 point font. Or alternatively, if you want to go kind of crazy with it, you can go into the character tab. And the character tab is really awesome. We can do all kinds of stuff like giving ourselves a little bit of italics. Um, I'm using the scroll by the way to uh, lower and up this. Um, or we can. 
adjust horizontal scale. And what this lets you do is if you need like just barely, just like a tiny little bit, um, just, just the text to be a tiny little bit smaller, you can lower this by a few percentages and no one will ever notice. And it'll let you fit text inside of your text box at exactly the uh, point font that you want while still squeezing it in just a little bit. So this this is something that I use a lot, especially when I'm writing long rules explanations and need to make sure everything is fitting. Um, similarly, we'll just uh, expand that out. Similarly, you have all kinds of options here. Um, justify, uh, this is all stuff that if you've interacted with Word, you're gonna get used to these. Um, but these are your, you know, your paragraph styles. This is where you're aligning your text in your text box um, and etc. So just the last tool that I want to show you real quick, we're not really going to be covering like images or uh, too much processing stuff, but there's just one last tool that is absolutely awesome I do want to show you, and that is the pen tool. The pen tool is for creating uh, different lines between things. So, you know, we could be like, oh, we're going to connect these two boxes. So literally pen tool is just point and click. And if we want to edit, edit any of those corners, we can actually um, use this node tool and just click and be like, actually, this is going to be like a little bit longer. Um, which is great. I love that tool. But yes, this pen tool is great because not only that, but if we want to kind of make more artistic lines like, oh, this is like some sort of grid tech thing, we just make a line and then we go into this uh, line toolbox and we can say, oh, this is going to end with like a circle. Uh, I need to find the circle. Um, you know, and we can make that a little bit larger so it really shows up. And you can do all kinds of uh, fun artistic weirdness and, you know, linking of boxes with that. But that is really the gist of Affinity Publisher. Um, I found it really intuitive, and I hope the way that I've explained it has made it a little more digestible and kind of got your gears turning in terms of how to use it. Once you're all done with that, you can just, you know, file save or file export, and you always want to export as, a, or generally want to export as PDF. But if you need to, you can always export as PNG if you want to, you know, show your friends a preview of a thing and just, you know, shoot them a picture on Discord or something like that. Um, this game, this program has all kinds of amazing export stuff. Anyways, I hope you found that explanation uh, helpful. Uh, it is currently 1.30 a.m. where I am, so I am sorry if I was slurring through a lot of that, but really, Affinity is a really great program, and I hope this inspired you to use it some more. So thank you for watching the video, and I'll see you guys next time.